Well, the documents have been unsealed. Forty-five documents were unsealed by Judge Azkarate's July 13th order in the Fairfax County Circuit Court. We have now obtained the copies of those documents. They have been uploaded to my website at andreaburkhart.com where you can find all of them. But this is just a quick introduction to what you can expect to find should you choose to go exploring in the archive. First off, what is in these files? There's a lot of discovery litigation is the first thing you're going to see. Um, discovery litigation is basically quibbling over who has to disclose what, whether your objection to that other person's request is valid or not, whether the request itself is legitimate or overbroad. So a lot of those things can be a little bit uh, painful to pour over. There's a lot of emails between lawyers talking about uh, scheduling and griping with each other over various disagreements. So be prepared. There is a lot of that type of thing in there. Um, it can get a little bit repetitive as well um, because you tend to find the same emails, the same pages of a transcript, the same interrogatory request. I mean, just all of these things get repeated over and over and over again because with discovery litigation, uh, arguments basically never die. So uh, that is one category of documentation that you will see uh, in these unsealed files. The motions in limine were the first thing that I went to. Uh, that's what I am definitely the most interested in. And so Rob is going to win the bet we had on this one. Uh, he took the under on 60 motions in limine between the two parties. There are 50 of them. So congratulations, Rob. Now I could quibble over the subparts, but we won't go there. So there's going to be a lot of details to go through with those and flesh out um, some little juicy bits here and there. And uh, those are the types of things that uh, can be a little bit fun because they show you the types of things that the parties were trying to do that the judge pulled the trigger on, said, nope, we're, we're not going to go there. That's not going to be allowed at trial. The expert disclosures are in. Uh, that's a little bit interesting because we get to see what the actual like written reports were for Dr. Hughes, Dr. Spiegel, a, a lot of these different different folks. Now we did not get Dr. Curry's IME report. Um, that is one thing I, I want to mention because that is statutorily uh, confidential. So um, that is not available. However, uh, a lot of the other formal indications of what the experts' opinions were uh, are going to be contained in these files. The sanctions litigation over the forensic extractions from Amber's devices, there is more information about that. It does appear that that motion was denied, uh, <clears throat> but there's a little bit more detail as well about uh, just Frankly, again, a little bit more quibbling that was happening between lawyers and experts and uh, everybody involved in that particular undertaking. Uh, but from what we can see in this new information, it does look like that uh, motion for sanctions was denied. There's an additional motion for sanctions against Elaine for violating the protective order. And the allegation here is that during the hearing in which Judge Azkarate considered whether she was going to permit a pool camera in the courtroom, Elaine chose that moment to announce to the world uh, that Amber Heard was going to be making sexual assault allegations against Johnny Depp. And so the protective order had a specific 
mechanism procedure that she was supposed to follow before there were going to be any public statements about these types of accusations. That did not happen. Uh, we don't, for this one as well, have any sort of outcome for that motion. That does tend to indicate it's probably been denied uh, because if it were granted, you're usually going to find an order and see what the sanction was that, that the judge imposed. So that's kind of the 10,000 foot view of, of some of the details that uh, are going to be available in these documents. Some things that aren't in there. I did already mention Dr. Curry's report. Uh, the ther therapist notes are not in there. Um, so important to Amber Heard in that Dateline interview, uh, but they weren't even important enough to cut it as, as an exhibit to uh, any of the motions in Lemony. Uh, yeah, Elaine, I guess, just didn't really push hard for those. We'll have to see if that ends up being part of the uh, challenge that she makes on appeal. Uh, but so far, it doesn't look like that issue was litigated particularly aggressively before trial. And also because, remember, these are the documents that were listed specifically in Judge Azkarati's July 13th order to unseal documents. That means it does not include things like the trial transcripts, the deposition transcripts. There are excerpts of those things um, kind of scattered throughout. Um, there's a, a practice of essentially pulling a couple pages from a deposition to make a point about it in the course of some of these various filings. And so there is some of that, um, additional little sections of, of depositions, uh, but not the depositions in their entirety. There's also going to be some more uh, indications in here about uh, the UK proceedings. Uh, there's some transcripts from the UK process. There is the confidential portion of the UK judgment. Um, so those are additional materials that um, they, they may have been out there. The trial bundle from the UK is, is, is sort of... Uh, it's out there, but not necessarily compiled in a particular publicly accessible location. Um, so it's possible that some of this information may already be out there in public. Uh, I just haven't seen it in kind of some of the common repositories for that documentation. So that's the bulk of what we got, what we didn't get. Uh, it is, as uh, we indicated in the letter, about uh, 6,600 pages. So a lot of details to go in and start going through. Uh, I, of course, am going to be working through those and bringing you some of my insights as I find them. In the meantime, uh, Certainly, if you are inclined to have a little light reading of your own, uh, please feel free to check out the documents. Uh, as I indicated, I just put them on my website, make it easy for you to find at andreaburkhart.com. And uh, you don't have to pay or join or anything like that. Um, I'm just making them publicly accessible for whoever would like to review them. I just want to thank everybody again who contributed towards the cost of getting these documents from Fairfax County. Uh, it was awesome to see such an enthusiastic response. Uh, I'm glad that so many people are interested in following me down this rabbit hole of seeing what all is here in all of these documents. And so I look forward to going through them in the coming days and we will let you know when we find some interesting details to share. See you soon.